Welcome to my channel Excel is Magical. In this video of the Excel Beginner to Expert series part 1, you are going to learn basics of getting started with Excel and understand the Excel's environment. We will learn how to manage the spreadsheets and we will also get to know about the elements of spreadsheets like rows, columns, cells and ranges. And before continuing here, I recommend you to watch a 2 minute beginner's guide video to know the objective of this series and other helpful prerequisites before you start learning from me. If you have already watched that, then let's deep dive into Excel from the beginning. Let's start Excel. To start Excel, there are so many ways. One of the easiest way is going on to this search box which you see on this bottom left corner and typing Excel program name that is EXCEL. So you could see that program appearing here. I go click on that. Now you could see on your screen Excel application has started. Now we need to start with a file first. You can either pick a template which is given here or you can also start with a blank workbook. Right now, I'll start with a blank workbook. Let me go click here. Now that Excel program has opened, let's understand the environment of Excel. That is, what's on your screen when you start Excel application. Now, this top area is actually called as ribbon. Ribbon houses different tabs. You find home tab here. You find insert tab, draw, page layout, and all that. Apart from these tabs, there's also one important tab by name file which houses some basic commands like starting a new file opening an existing file saving and all that now let us understand the hierarchy here tab houses groups like when you go to home tab you find this clipboard group you have this font group alignment number and all that same way if i go to data tab you have this sort and filter data tools and all that tab has groups and within group you find commands or tools like if you go to font group within font you have commands like bold italic font underlining font change the font name change the size colors and all that ribbon houses tab tab has groups within group you find tools we use the tools for a specific requirement below that there's a bar called formula bar you'll be more clear with this if you follow my videos next now let us get into what is excel excel is spreadsheet application spreadsheet is nothing but a grid of rows and columns so when you open excel the major area is occupied by a spreadsheet and in this spreadsheet we store our information which can be used for further analysis and presenting our data just like a book has multiple pages in it excel file is a workbook which has got multiple spreadsheets in it when you start excel it opens with a workbook and worksheet in it or a spreadsheet in it the other name for spreadsheet is actually worksheet you can keep adding multiple spreadsheets to your workbook by just clicking on this button plus here where you can add new sheet let me click this button so there was one sheet i have added two more sheets to this one more way to add a sheet is right click on this sheet tab you find some commands here right the first command there is insert so when i click on insert you get one dialog box just click ok to this so you got a excel sheet here this is another way to add a spreadsheet in your workbook and in case if you don't need that sheet you just need to right click on it you have delete command there you would see when I, when I click on delete, the sheet file will get deleted. All right. This will get deleted when there is no data immediately. But if there is some information in it, I'll just type something. Now I go and delete it. I go use this command delete. Remember, when there is some data in your spreadsheet, Excel will prompt for confirmation. This is because sheet deletion cannot be undone and you might be losing your data permanently. So be careful before deciding that whether you really need it or not. So right now I don't need it. I click on delete. Yeah, the sheet got deleted now. For renaming, there are various ways. 
one of the way is again right click and you have rename option here so i go click on rename and give some name to it i just write product one and then hit enter one more way to rename take the mouse pointer on the tab double click on it you'll get the renaming option then you name the sheet according to your requirement so let me say it as product two we can also move this spreadsheets wherever you want and you can also make a copy of this spreadsheets for moving a spreadsheet you just need to click on the spreadsheet and drag and drop currently product one is the first sheet in these three sheets so if i want to make it last just simply click drag and drop it wherever i want and if you want to make a copy of this like imagine there was something stored in this now i would like to make a copy of the entire spreadsheet for making a copy you can drag and drop by holding a control key see when you hold a control key and then drag you could see product one's second copy here right another way to move or copy the sheet is through right mouse click let us just do that now let us move the sheet product two so i right click on that you find command move or copy click on that you will get this dialog box here you have to indicate where exactly this sheet has to be moved imagine i want to move this at the end so i click on move to end and then click ok so the worksheet product 2 got moved to the end and if you want to copy right click on the sheet use more copy command imagine this time i want to move this before sheet 3 that is before this sheet so i first pick sheet 3 here because the option here is before sheet right so i pick sheet 3 here and do not forget to opt for this if you are moving a sheet you can directly click ok but if you want to create a copy of it you have to mark this option so i'll mark it now because i want to create a copy and then click ok you could see the product tools copy has been created here now another command which would be helpful here is to give a color for the tab it's always a good practice to have a same color for the worksheets which has similar kind of data so to give a tab color you need to right click on the tab or on the sheet name so i'll right click you find a command tab color so you need to just pick the color now let me pick some color all right so i picked blue the tab color has changed to blue let me give the same color for another tab again maybe for this tab product 2 so i go to the sheet right click on it choose tab color choose the same color again so look at this the tabs product 2 and product 2's copy both are with the same color and lastly if you do not want to view the sheet temporarily you can also hide the spreadsheet how do you hide it just right click on the tab you have an option hide so go click on hide a product one copy got hidden now and anytime you can bring the sheet back when you right click on the tab you will find a command unhide here click on it wherein you'll find all the hidden sheets click on the sheet which you want to unhide and then click ok so i got my sheet back and then if you want to navigate between sheets of course you go click on the sheets you can also use a keyboard shortcut control page up to take you to one sheet before your current sheet and control page down to take you to one sheet after your current sheets if there are multiple spreadsheets in your workbook something like a file which i have opened currently now you might find it challenging to travel through the sheets by pressing control page down or control page up or on by clicking on it so the best way to reach to a sheet is by right clicking on this area you will see all the sheets available on your workbook and you can very easily reach to a sheet currently which you want to go to for example if you want to go to the sheet scenario i just need to click on that and click ok let's now get inside a spreadsheet and understand more about it let me add a blank sheet let me click on this plus i got a blank sheet as we learned earlier a spreadsheet is a grid of rows and columns the vertical arrangements are the columns and the horizontal arrangements are the rows and excel addresses columns in an alphabetical order like you have column a column b 
column C like that, this will go up till X, Y, Z and then after Z, it will continue from A, 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 B, A, C and then in the version 2007 and later, we have columns up to X, F, D. This is the column number 16384 and Excel refers rows by numbers. We have row 1, we have row 2, we have row 3. Like that, it goes up till row number 1,048,576 rows. Look at this, we have 1,048,576 rows. By now, you could have imagined, so much of information can be stored in a single Excel worksheet. So many rows and so many columns. And like this, you can have so many Excel worksheets in a single workbook. Like rows and columns, you should also know what does Excel calls its unit of a spreadsheet. When I'm saying unit of a spreadsheet, I'm talking about all these boxes here. So boxes is not a correct terminology here. Actually, these boxes are called as cells. A cell is basically an intersection of a row and a column. For example, the current cell which is active now is from the intersection of row 5 and column D. So because it is intersected from this column and this row, this cell is addressed by D5. You could see the same address in this place called name box. If you go on the top left corner, just before the formula bar, you find the name box which shows you the address of the current cell. You could see here it is showing as D5. And apart from cells, rows and columns, you should also know a term called range. A range is basically a group of rectangular cells. Like for example, let me select one range here. The selection of what you see on the screen is a range. And a range is also addressed like how row, columns and cells are addressed. So the current range which is selected now will get an address from its top left corner that is cell D5 till the end that is on the bottom right corner that is a cell H12. So the current range will get an address of D5 colon H12. So whenever you do some kind of analysis, you might pick either a cell or you might pick a range or a row or a column. So if you understand how to address all this, it becomes very easier for us to use these elements in future. That's it in this video and in the next part, that is part 2, I am going to cover more topics on Excel basics like data entering and editing basics, understanding different types of data, entering data into a spreadsheet and basic formatting. Thanks for watching this video and hope you enjoyed it and if you did, give a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel Excel is Magical and hit that bell to get notifications whenever I put on new videos. I am going to see you in my next videos.